Boy, are we excited. Tyler Perry is here, and over the last two decades, he has built an entertainment empire, writing, directing, starring in multiple films, creating hit shows, and building a 330-acre production studio in Atlanta that has hired gazillions yes. of people. He's always lifting people up, and for his latest project, Tyler is taking it back to the beginning. His new film is actually the first wow. movie script he ever wrote. It's called A Jazz Man's Blues, and it's debuting this Friday, mm -hmm. 27 years after he originally came up with the idea. Yeah, on Netflix, Tyler. Netflix, so excited. I mean, sometimes you know you have a gem in your life, and writing this one 27 years, 26 years ago, I mean, did you always know there was something about it? Because sometimes you write something and you put it away, you say, that's, that's actually not up to par. Yeah, no, this was special for me. I always knew from the beginning. I knew it was special. I just had to wait for the right time. I was trying to build a career, build a studio, build the brand and build all of those things so I can get to the labor of love that this is. Do you feel like hmm. that the guy that wrote that script 27, 26 years mm -hmm. ago could ever imagined what you've built now? No, I had big dreams because originally when I thought about it, I wanted to cast myself and Will Smith and Diana Ross and <laughs> Halle Berry. I had this great cast them? in my... Did well, la later on, I talked to Miss <laughs> Ross once or twice about it, but but timing never worked out. So, no, I, I couldn't have... I, I imagined great things, but nothing to this degree. This is beyond my imagination. I do think there's something about <clears throat> believing in oneself because I think a lot of people who yeah. watch our show always... They, they, ha they have things they want to do, but they don't know if they are capable. Mm. But somehow you always sort of believe that why not me? Yeah. Why not me? Yeah, exactly right. But because when I'd ask my mother questions, of why can't I have that? Or why can't you? My mother, they, your father grew up in the Jim Crow South, so they thought certain things were for white people. So I said, well, why can't we live there? Why can't I have that? And when they would say, because, because we're poor, because we're black, that never settled with me. I always felt like I could. If I worked hard, if I did my best, if I honored people, those things will come around, and they have. Yeah, and one of yeah. the things that we just are astounded by mm -hmm. is your generosity. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like you, you built this empire, which we can't say about that many people, no, right? No, no. But it's not like enough. You're uh -huh. not like, okay, me and my family, we're good. You're always pulling up uh -huh. the chair for others, and your generosity just, uh -huh. like, shines. Uh -huh. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Meghan Markle recently said that you reached out to her yeah. and said, come, you know, you can live in my home. Yeah, it was a very difficult time for them. And, and what I know about the two of them, and I wish the world knew how much they love each other. These two people love each mm -hmm. other. They found each other. in the Out of all these odds against them finding each other, they found each other. And the love that they have is really, really moving. And I just wanted to do anything I could to support them. Isn't that funny? Sometimes you know when you meet someone. Yeah. You know, sometimes you can see, like, what love is. And right. you can tell right away. Yeah, yeah. And if I don't have that, what, what she and Harry have, I don't want it. That's really amazing. Wow. Yeah. Wow, yeah. that is yeah. incredible. Yeah. Wow, that's saying a lot. It's yes. true. It's true. Yeah, it's true. God, finding too, do you believe in soulmates? Are you the kind of person who thinks there's one person for you? I don't know if there's one person yeah. for everybody, but I think that there are many different soulmates for different seasons of points in your life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Depends on what what you're looking for in a soulmate. I'm not talking about somebody that's with you for your life and love, but then there may be someone who is just a friend who is a soulmate mm -hmm. in that area. So there are different different levels of it, I believe. Well, one of our soulmates is Oprah. Yeah, yeah that's right. That's right. <laughs> At least Mine too. Yeah. Yeah. Mine too. At least too. deep yeah. in my soul yeah. Yeah. Where, where we both love to read and all the yeah. things that we love. And she's your, your son's godmother. She's my, yeah, that's she's my son's so godmother. Sweet. What yeah. kind of wisdom does she... I mean, I'm just asking for myself. <laughs> you know, are you kidding? She's Oprah. I mean, just the, just the amount of, of wisdom she carries. And listen, let me tell you something about her. What you see is what you get. There's no shadow, no turning. Oprah is everything you've seen on television. That is who she is. So that's what my son gets to look up to, and I really appreciate it. How that. did she start cheering you on? Like, how did she enter your life and become such an important part of it? I'll never forget it. I had done Diary of a Mad Black Woman. It was 2004 or five, I think, and I got a phone call. I was walking down the street in Vegas. I was doing a play, and I almost walked into traffic. Somebody says, hi, this is Oprah. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> what? And uh, she invited me to the Legends Ball. She talked about how much she enjoyed the movie, and it started from there, 18 years ago. So, You know, I think about all those, all of your, the movies you did, the Medea movies, that made tons of bank at the, at the box office, yet every time you looked in a paper for a review or in the New York Times, it never, there was never a write-up about it. How did you kind of keep going through? Because sometimes you do need a little, like, hey, yeah, validation. Attaboy, way to go. 
it, well, I, I got it from the audience, yeah. the, my audience who had yeah. been right there by my side. For, oh. You know, if they loved it, then that's what matters. And it yeah. was very difficult for me to to have someone review it and it wasn't specifically targeted to them. So mm -hmm. uh, like a, some some critics sometimes. Right. But for me, it was just like as long as my audience was happy, I know that they would it would work. And it continued to work over and over and over again. So now to have these reviews on Jazz Man. Can you get yeah, the reviews? Or are yeah. you freaking out about well, that? Well, listen, do you I, read them? I do not. I do not. But speaking of Oprah reading, she called me up. She said, did you read the Variety review? I was like, no, I haven't. She's like, no, you should. I was like, no, I don't want to get my heart into that. No, 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 read it. So she read it to me on the phone. She read every did, word you, to did me. Did you record phone. that just to have <laughs> for a I, rainy day? I should have, but yeah. she's emotional and in tears about you it. Know, so it was really great. Hoda mentioned um, that you have built this incredible studio mm -hmm. and you've, you've employed thousands mm -hmm. of people mm -hmm. who think of it as their home and mm -hmm. as a place to grow. Um, how, how important is that in your kind of trajectory of your career? At this point, what, what, what else do I have to do? What else do I have to prove? So at this point, it's, it's really about the people coming to work and seeing these faces. I've got people who were former prisoners coming to work there and mm -hmm. the lighting and grip. I've got all these black and brown people, mm -hmm. LGBTQ women, just they've, who've never had an opportunity to be in this side of the business. So it makes me feel great. I'm to sure see. they've said thank you before, but we happen to speak <laughs> to a couple of them who would no. like to say thank you. So take no. a look at the screen. <laughs> Are you kidding? Words cannot express Aww. how much love and admiration I have for Tyler Perry. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the opportunities that you have allowed for not only myself, but all the people who work here. He is someone that has shown us what is possible with sacrifice, with hard work, with faith. The work you put in is the reward you get out of it. And that's what I've learned all these years working side by side with you. I am so proud to be part of this historic event a black man owning a studio in Georgia. <laughs> he has broken every single mold, broken every single rule. And all I can say is thank you. And I'm proud to be part of your story. He's the illest. He's my pops. Hi, right, TP. Come back to Atlanta. You need to work, all right? <laughs> What do you think about that? I don't that? like surprises, man. <laughs> oh, God, that, that's awesome. That's awesome. Wow. That's really moving. I don't like surprises. I don't care, camera. That's really great. Well, your, really your lovely great. people uh, helped us uh, put that together. And they so. didn't tell me. Well, so. we, we were proud, <laughs> but we're so glad they didn't.